So I'm Scott Anderson with Cash Cow Farmer, and thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to go over the number one problem in farming right now, which is managing all the farm data, trying to make sense out of all the stuff that's happened on our farm this past year, what's going to happen next year, trying to project our profits, trying to figure out how we're going to make money in farming, where the strengths are in our operation, where the weaknesses are. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to provide some solutions, you know, go over a little bit about the story behind our products that we have that we have that help farmers and we'll go from there. So the three main things that I want to talk about today is identifying that problem of farm data management and how it came about, how it came about and the rapid pace that technology is constantly changing in. Secondly, the new way versus the old way, which as generations change on the farming operation, this is a this is a big challenge, like getting the new generation in, involved in farming and making sure that those those two different philosophies of managing a business are working out okay. And then thirdly, the solution to the data management. You know, we want to be we want to have the Jedi analysis. We want to have a tool that'll break down our farming operation and all the things that happened on that farm our farm for the year and figure out how we're going to make profit next year and how we're going to strengthen our operation, manage risk, manage this sort of stuff. So starting out, the number one problem in farm data or farm management is managing the data. And that's taking all the technology that we have on our farm and then trying to figure out, you know, what happened that year and how we can use that data to improve our farming operation. So, should be good. So anyway, one the new technology investments are one of those challenges, you know, because the technology is coming out super fast and we're not sure exactly how we're gonna, you know, take care of all this stuff and do it. Oh, let me check something real quick. Did it not go, Joe? Oh, it's, it should be good. Don't worry. So anyway, go, getting back into it, new technology investments. I was just at a farm show, and the new professor, there was a professor that was there, and he, he was going over all this, all this, these sensors and all this new technology coming out to help us on our farming operation. And, you know, he's like, oh, we're going to have – cameras in every field we're going to have you know we got cameras in these fields watching the crops grow to maturity and grow, get through this get through all the different stages of growth and you know we're, we have all this this data and all these sensors sensing this and that and the other thing and he, it was a great presentation exciting technology coming out but as a farmer and as a manager of a business how do we take this technology and turn it into profit and so that's what I asked him at the end of his presentation. I basically said, you know, this is great, exciting information, and we're, we're really interested in seeing this stuff work. But how – have you done any studies on how us farmers are going to invest in this and then take that information and turn it into profit on our farming operation? Have you done any research in regard to that? And so – Unfortunately, there wasn't any. He didn't have an answer because, I mean, a university professor with all this information, and he didn't. He was like, I don't know. We haven't really looked into the profitability of all this technology. I'm just like, well, you know, that's kind of what we're we're interested in as business owners and farmers. So, you know, technology is moving so fast. And just had a funny conversation with my son the other day, and he was reading this book that I gave him from when I was a kid. It's just a funny novel book, and he's like, dad, what's a Walkman? And I'm like, you don't know what a Walkman is? I'm just like, well, it's like an iPad, but before iPads, we had, or it's like an iPod, but before that, we had little cassette tapes with, with like, you know, 30 to 40 minutes of music on it. And we would put it in this little player, which connected our headphones and we could walk around and listen to music. It was like, a, it was a huge change in technology. And he was like, okay. And I'm like, so it went from the Walkman and into a CD player, into a CD player with anti-skip, and then into the iPad, you know, invented by Steve Jobs, which t 
totally revolutionized it. There was other things that before the iPad, but Steve Jobs really revolutionized the way we listen to music. And so, you know, the same thing's happening in agriculture. We have, you know, I remember when used to have no sensors and all of a sudden there was a yield monitor like that was one of the first things it was just breakthrough in agriculture now we've got gps steering and all this stuff and the planners that come with markers yet on them those markers are mostly just weights to keep the wings of the planner down nowadays because you know nobody uses the markers everybody's using the auto steer and all that stuff so technology is going so fast and it's moving beyond it's moving so fast that we're having problems keeping up with it on a data analysis side of things. I mean, think about like the weather data and all this other data and these resources that are out there to help the farmers somehow, you know, make better decisions. I mean, it's great to know exactly what the rainfall was every single day on every single field in your farm and how that's added up over the year. But, you know, taking that information and making improving profitability on your farming operations really is what it, what it all boils down to. So, you know that's kind of so you see here we have a pretty big problem trying to figure out how to manage all this stuff so next the new way versus the old way is another big thing so i'm going to go into just a quick story about when i came back from new york city and started working with my dad and he had the old way of thinking and still does do the old way of thinking even though he's a successful businessman and he started you know manufacturing company and started you know, a farm machinery company with Horsch. And so that Horsch stuff is part, part of something that my dad started with Michael Horsch, you know, 30 years ago. But anyway, he invented equipment and he's had, been, had a really great time, you know, giving back to agriculture and far as technology. And so he's a smart man, but at the same time, he's still based in some, a lot of those old way of thinking. So when I came back, you know, I was like, all right, so how am I going to add value to the farming operation? We're still trying to figure that out. And my dad's like, well, you drive truck, you need to learn how to drive truck, drive the planter, drive the combine, you know, operate all the machinery, fix all the machinery, change the oil, change bearings. You need to know how to do all this stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, why don't I just hire somebody that already knows how to do that stuff? And I can focus on making sure that we're, we're profitable and all this stuff. And he's like, no, you got to know everything. And, you know, we kind of we kind of had disputes about that for a long time. And I know a lot of the, the up and coming generation farmers, those farmers that are, you know, 40 and under, in, in my generation, they're, they're, they kind of bump heads with their dads about that because their dad's like, oh, we spend all winter fixing every single piece of machinery up and all this other stuff, which is important, you know, especially if you got employees that keep busy year round. But at the same time, you know, you got to make sure that you're spending your time where it's most effective and you're, you're not wasting time on something that you could be paying somebody and then using your time to do something more important in your operation, which is, which is where that risk lies and doing everything yourself so anyway i was like dad it doesn't make sense for me i mean you just got back from wall street and you want me to drive the, the semi truck you know i was like swallow my pride and drive the semi truck after being an investment banker for a little while and so i did that but in the meantime i was building a big da data analysis tool using excel and several other programs and so i would build this up and and the Finally, I was able to help my dad make better decisions on the farm, show him exactly what was going on in every single field in our farming operation and just break down our farming operation and show him here's the profitability. You know, this is what's going on in every single field, our cost of production for this field, that field, the rest of it, because we're renting ground, we're crop sharing ground. We've got debt on some fields. We got fields that we own free and clear. We're, we're starting to variable rate fertilizers and seeds, you know, so we've got all these changing moving parts with all the new technology coming out and we're trying to make better decisions and, and improve, improve our profitability based on all this stuff going on. So anyway, my dad, you know, kind of with the old mentality, trying to do the same thing over and over, just not, you know, he totally complacent with the farming operation and, you know, he, he was still, I mean, my dad is a very smart guy and he's, he's trying to, he's always exercising new things, but at the same time, you know, so we're doing the same rotation and we're kind of just doing the same thing. We've been farming the same rental ground for 20 years. And, you know, I was able to show him that, Hey, you know, we're not making money farming wheat right now because of the prices and everything. So we ended up dropping wheat out of the production, which was a big deal because my dad invented the Anderson opener, which was, you know, a, a implement a tool for wheat farming. And that was that was a challenge. So anyway, we dropped weed out of production, increased profitability. Second big thing we did was we dropped 
a bunch of rental ground that was hardly profitable at at high prices and i didn't see prices staying up that high for that long so you know mainly we just we, we just let it go and it was challenge in our operation anyway because of the location it was so far away from our home farm and the rest of our fields that we're like oh man we're killing ourselves to make you know 10 bucks an acre on this stuff and corn six dollars so what are we going to do if corn falls through the floor you know we're just going to lose our butts and so we let the we let the land go which is always ch tough for a farmer to do but we've made very good decisions by knowing and you know like the old gi joe saying knowing is half the battle right so for us knowing what was going on in every field and the economics behind each field and then finding those those weak fields going in there and seeing okay what's what's the problem here like where are we where are we going wrong is our is our fertilizer program not working are we putting the wrong, wrong crops on here you know working with some of our data our soil scientists on trying to turn these fields around and get them get them productive and, and profitable so that spreadsheet really turned our operation around and managing your farm like Sam Walton manages Walmart or used to manage Walmart is what we have to do. Sam Walton, he knew what every single stores, he had a big, a big sheet before spreadsheets. He just had a big piece of paper with every single store on it. And he knew the profit. He knew the revenue. He knew the cost. He knew like the number of the top five selling products for every store. And so whenever he ran into a store that wasn't profitable, he could he could fly there and figure out what was going on. He knew where to where to invest his time in order to turn around that operation. Or if it wasn't wasn't savable, he could liquidate that that problem without before it started dragging down the rest of the business. Secondly, he knew where his winners were, so he could fit, look at his winners, look at what he was doing right. Those those fields in our relative to us, those fields that are home runs. What are we doing right there, versus those fields that are losing us money? You know. How do we, we don't want to farming is hard, hard work. It's probably the hardest job, you know, you'll ever do, especially in season when we're, when we're planting and when we're, when we're fertilizing and harvesting and spraying, I mean, it's busy, busy, busy. And if you got cattle on top of it, I mean, or a dairy, I can't even imagine the guys that it's just, I don't fortunately don't have cattle because I wouldn't be able to do cash cow if I had cattle because I'd be working all day, every single day, you're around 30 below or, or, you know, a hundred above where you got to feed the cattle. So anyway, a lot of sympathy for the guys that are doing the grain and livestock of some kind. So anyway, getting back into it, Sam Wall was able to determine where all of his problems, strengths and weaknesses were. And as a farmer, if you don't know your per field economics, how can you manage your farm? I mean, how can you succeed and know what is going on on your farming operation? That's that's a big problem. So anyway, that's that's one thing. Warren Buffett also think about Warren Buffett. He manages Berkshire Hathaway, which is a big, big company that owns all these other companies. And and Warren Buffett is all day. He reads six to eight hours a day, annual reports, knowing and and all this, you know, earning statements and all this stuff, income balance sheets, all these things of all the different companies that he owns because it's so important for him to know what's going on in every business that he owns so that he knows whether or not that's still a good investment now and in the future. So you see how us as farmers need to kind of adopt these mentalities from the most successful businessmen of all time and implement them into our farm. But we need a system, right? We just can't be pencil and paper and spreadsheets and stuff like that. So now let's move on to solutions for data management you know the jedi analysis here so we got i basically have narrowed it down to three criteria that we need for this solution and the first criteria is it has to be easy to use i mean as a farmer we're kind of like engineers and we're cpas and mbas and all this other stuff but we can't have a system that forces us to be computer programmers MBAs, CPAs. I mean, this, the program has to be simple. Many of the farmers that I talk to and visit, they got a high school education, or and and that's it. I mean, you don't they they don't have a business degree in Wall Street experience like like I was blessed to have. So that it that it, the program has to be simple. You know, it can't be complicated, and there can't be all kinds of crap that you got to do. So that's number one. Number two is the information. At the end of the day, when you invest that time to put in the information into that software program, it has to be actionable. So the result 
after you put all the data in, put what happened on your farm, the information that you get back has to be actionable, meaning that it has to be broken down into a readable format that you can use to make better decisions on your farm, increase profits, cut losses, things like that. You have to be able to, you know, it's like going into a doctor's office and you got a headache and he's like, all right, let's do, let's do, uh, let's chop your leg off and do open heart surgery. <laughs> not not going to work, right? To have to have a program that's like, all right, you got a headache. Well, here's, this is what you need to do. And then here, here's a prescription that you need to take in order to resolve that. So it has to line you up the data. The, the solution has to line up the data with a, with a solution to the problems. So it has to, has to find the problem. And then we have to be able to implement a solution. So the third, the third uh, thing is it has to be affordable and it has to provide a good return on investment. So you can't implement, you can't spend $5 to save $2 per acre. That's a terrible investment. You're just wasting your time. Number one, if you're spending too much time and too much money, you're, you're just gonna lose money at the end of the day. Cause we wanna, we wanna invest money where it comes back and more money, right? Like the, like the, the think and grow rich, the richest man in Babylon, you know, invest, make your money work for you. So that's what we want to do. We want to make our money work for us on the farm. So all of these investments, whether it's precision egg or, or software for our farming operation, we want to make sure that we're getting a good return on that. So that's the three criteria. I'll go over them one more time. Easy to use. Number one, information has to be organized in, in a format that's, that allows it to be actionable by the farmer. And then number three is uh, it has to be affordable you know the solution has to be affordable so let's talk about some solutions here so number one pencil and paper we can always use pencil and paper to calculate things you know but when your farming operation grows you have to upgrade your your analysis systems i mean if you're if you're just starting out and you, your dad gives you a couple fields and you're going like that yeah start with the freehand method but graduate into a more professional better method for you as you move into you know bigger operation and stuff like that so the second the second solution is going to be spreadsheets spreadsheets are great you can put data a lot of data in there you can change data and, and put formulas in there and, and it'll manipulate things for you but it's very hard to draw like live futures quotes streaming futures and it's hard to do you know transfer data to another year because you have to rebuild it and so also it's easy easy to break a spreadsheet if you've got tons of formulas and you got a miss key somewhere and all these these cells are connected and poof next thing you know you got a half a day trying to figure out what's causing all this hashtag ref to come up reference problem so anyway spreadsheets they're they're a solution but they're not a professional solution that's gonna allow you to really take your farm to the next level third is software and i'd just like to show you real quickly you know what we have for a software solution i'm just going to show you like the nuts and bolts the, the the dream so imagine just picture and imagine You've got all your fields lined up, right? So you've entered your data in, all your planting data, your spraying, your harvesting data, all this stuff you've entered in. You spent, you've invested that time updating everything, the prices for all your inputs you got in there, your operating costs. Every nickel you spend on the farm is in there. So you invested this time. Now picture all your fields. You got, you got every single field. You got your crop share. You got your rental fields. You got <clears throat> the fields you own free and clear. You've got uh, the fields that we got dead on. You got all these fields in there, the fields that you got hailed on, and you know what your return on investment is for every one of those fields. So just picture what that would look like on your farming operation, and how you can make way better management decisions if you had that information. So let me switch over to Cash Cow Farmer. This is the nuts and bolts of what that dream is. So here's a nice organized table. You've got every single field right here. You've got planted acres, operating costs, overhead, custom applications, seed, fertilizer, chemical for every field. You've got the yields on every field. You got, most importantly, the profit on every field. I mean, that's what we're trying to get to is the profit on every field. Trying to figure out how much money we made or lost on every field. So you can look at certain fields and when you find or those really low profitability fields you can get in there and see okay what did what happened on this field you know how does the cost differ from the other fields start diagnosing the patient try start trying to figure out a solution for what's going on with that field and you know from there you can you determine you can you can then figure out what's going on in your operation so that's you know cash cow farmer i'm a farmer 
luckily have some really good business experience. Cash crop farming was designed by farmers for farmers. It's not designed by, you know, bankers and, and uh, accountants and all these people that want to capitalize on farming. It's designed by farmers for farmers. So you have the opportunity to get in there and everything makes sense to you. Bushels per acre, tons of your fertilizer, gallons of your Roundup. I mean, all this stuff makes sense to you as a farmer. So imagine a solution that was built by a farmer for a farmer and how easy that'll be to work with. So that's one thing. But secondly, after you, after you get in and figure out what's going on in your operation, how do you implement change? And if you, and, and then how do you look deeper? How, you know, sometimes you got to hire, got to go, got to go to a specialist. You know, if you got a problem and you're, and you can't figure it out, you can't self-diagnose and, and cash cow is a diagnostics tool. It's like the, the ultimate CAT scan. You know, sometimes you might go in there and say, all right, well, I need some Band-Aids and some, some Tylenol and stuff like that, you know. And then you might say, oh, i got to hire a freaking brain surgeon to come in here and analyze my farming operation and get this thing turned around, get this boat back, you know, patch up these holes and get this boat back on the street narrow. We don't want to be the Titanic farm here, you know, that sank in the middle of the ocean. So thinking about that is is another big part of what we do. So a lot of farmers will find the information, but taking action and knowing the right action to take is a big challenge you know how do we know if we got a good insurance strategy how do we know if we're optimizing fsa programs i mean how do we know that we're I'm, we're busy farming we don't have time to mess around at the fsa office how many people do you like going to the fsa office do you like going to your insurance agent and listen to all this these different policies and programs that they have or do you just like you just hate that right most i haven't met very many farmers who are like Oh, can't wait to go to the FSA. Just love it there. Free coffee, you know, good time at the FSA. So no, nobody, few people like that. I think I've got a mental problem because I actually enjoy the financial business side of farming. And that's where, you know, I, I can come in and, and help farmers on a, on a one by one basis, personalize their farm and, and build it up, make sure that they're optimizing their insurance. Do you spend more insurance than you get out of insurance? That's a problem if you do. Rarely should your insurance not pay you more than you paid it. It's subsidized, number one. And and the way you can set your insurance up is there's many different really good ways to set your insurance up so that you're getting paid when you're not maximizing your production on every single field. So that's one thing that we specialize in. We specialize in insurance strategy. We specialize in optimizing the FSA, making sure that you're maxing out, you're limiting out the amount of money you can get from the FSA because there is a limit. And if you don't, if you didn't know there was a limit, then you've already got a problem because there's a nice limit. They can add, you know, 40 to $70 an acre on your farming operation, depending on the size and depending on some programs that you've been in the past. There's lots of that conservation. There's the ARC, you know, a lot of, from, every farmer's familiar with ARC and uh, PLC programs right now because we've just been the farm program or the farm program just redid another deal and so everybody probably got their art but did you optimize it i mean did you optimize it make sure that you're maxing out everything you can and so that's a big problem that we work with secondly is estate planning well, how is the next generation set up when 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 the the the, the father fa fa farmer or the grandfather farmer when they pass away is the land protected are they going is the family going to have to sell assets in order, to, in order to buy the land you know just to pay the taxes like we got estate planning is, is these work excellent together insurance fsa estate planning and then finally the tax strategy those are one of our top packages and they work synonymously they work so synergistically together the way you set all those things up together and, and make them work really really well is I mean, it's really good to, to think about all those at the same time. Few people understand one of those, let alone all of them. So lastly, we do strategic growth management. How many, have you ever had a problem trying to find good, reliable labor? I've never met a farmer that's like, oh, I've got guys just falling off trees trying to help me. You know, they're, they're always like, I cannot find a good guy to save my life. Last guy, he did this and this, and then this guy stopped showing up for work during harvest. Can you imagine that, Scott? This guy stopped showing up for work at harvest. Oh, blew my mind. You know, I got sick, and then my well, everybody else got sick, apparently. So, you know, it's it's tough. It's The farmer, the training involved on a farm, I mean, I remember the first time I drove a tractor, it was like, all right, you put it, this this goes forward, this goes backwards, this lifts the disc up, this pushes the disc down, this folds the disc. All right, have fun. 
you know, you know, do everything, do the whole field. <laughs> That's about it for training. You know, training is, is farmers and training is not very good. So the strategic growth management that we do, we set up personalized training programs. We connect farmers with labor internationally or domestically and set up the training program so that when these guys get in, they know more than the farmer about the machinery. They're like, all right, so before I get in there, I'm going to be here an hour early, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to check all the oil. I'm going to check the tires. I'm going to check this, that, and the other thing. And, uh, and then once I get in there, I got a couple other pre-start checks, and then we're good to go. And then as I'm planting or fertilizing or, or spraying, I'm going to be watching for these uh, eight items, make sure that everything's flowing well. And, and then I'm going to monitor. I'm going to do this. So imagine having a system that's optimized so that basically – you hire somebody new, or maybe there's somebody seasonally coming every year. It's all optimized so that you they come, they start training right away. They do it in the classroom training, on the machinery training, and then when you're ready to plant, they're ready to go. Or when you're ready to fertilize or whatever you're ready to do, they are ready to go, and they, they know that machinery just as well as you, if not better. So that's, that's an important part of what we do, especially as there's more acres under the same farm. And then lastly, marketing plans, grain marketing plans, setting up a strategic grain marketing plan so that you're selling your grain at a profit and not just selling your grain. And then the biggest thing is that farmers, they try and hit home run every single pitch, every single year. Because farmers get basically one paycheck a year and that's when they sell their grain. And so farmers, they step up to that plate and they lick their lips and they just want to just knock one out of the park every single time. They want a home run on every single year because if you sell all your grain at $6 versus $5, I mean, that might be another million or $3 million in your pocket or another hundred grand. You know, that's what they think about. So they get emotionally attached to the dream of selling at the top and then they, they totally fumble it and they end up storing the grain until they need the money. And then they sell when they need the money at whatever price the market is doing. And at that time, every farmer needs money. And so the, the, the market's flooded with grain and the price is horrible. So setting up a strategy, having a plan. I mean, Ben Franklin, he said, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And so having a plan in every part of the business side of your operation is essential, especially marketing. Marketing is very, very important. You can, you can turn around a farm just by a good, solid marketing plan. So below, there's an opportunity for you to set up a consultation. Before we do anything, we implement everybody into the cash cow farmer software program which is free try it try it for 30 days for free and we will do a demonstration we'll do a personalized demonstration we'll show you how to do everything yourself and get you started and from that point we can start diagnosing your farm and seeing if there's maybe some opportunity for some consulting at that point but first thing we do is we get your farm in there and we show you how to do everything give you resources and make sure that you know what's going on in your farm and are comfortable with like all right well I got a big problem. I'm, I'm investing a lot in insurance and getting killed on it every year. My insurance costs me $30 an acre every year and I'm not getting anything back or I'm getting, it's costing me $40 an acre in insurance policy and I'm getting maybe 10 back an acre. So the, the Delta is $30 an acre loss every single year in insurance. That's, that's a problem, you know, or FSA, I'm only getting $5 an acre on my farm for FSA or I got kicked out of the FSA program. How do we get around that? You know, so these are sorts of things that we work work with. Around, I've worked with farmers all over the United States trying to turn around their operations. So these are solutions that uh, might be a good fit for you. So there's no there's no risk in trying. It's free to sign up for the Cash Cow Farmer Software Program, and it's free to fill out and do a consultation. It's not going to cost you anything. And if anything, I'll give you some free advice over the phone, like how to cut your insurance premium in half. You know, for for, for the next five years and just little tricks that you don't know about as a farmer. So, you know, fill out the information below and, and chat us up, give us a call, look at, look us up on the website or email me. My email's right on the board back there, Scott at cashcowfarmer.com or go to cashcowfarmer.com and check out our blog. we got tons of great information. Subscribe to us on iTunes. I, pr I try and pump out a, a blog or a podcast every single week or every other week talking about, you know, just, just based on my conversations I have with farmers all over the U.S., I get lots of problems. Usually the first thing they say is, say, oh, Scott, this is a problem. This is a problem. And so then I'll do a podcast or write a blog about those problems and solutions to those problems. So anyway, that's going to be it for today. And, uh, you know, sign up, sign up below. Check out cashcowfarmer.com. You know, set up for your 30, free 30 day trial, and uh, we'll see you next time. Keep on trucking, guys. Talk to you later.